Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome again uh, back to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard here, and we're talking about education and basically the needle in the haystack. And, and I've got a heck of a guess, guess would be today that we were able to talk to this. As you know, from a historical standpoint here at the Oregon Voters Digest, we have been very, very interested in the whole issue of education. And so it, it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm just elated to, to have uh, uh, Dr. Jay Kluski here with us today. And, and the first half hour, if you missed it, you better pick it up on next Tuesday. Uh, at uh, at noon on channel 23 because I tell you it's very exciting a lot of good information whatever so I'd, re I'd, I'd refer you know I'd recommend that you you do do this so now let's continue on where we left off right before we we, we took a break we were talking about uh, maybe the possibility of the comparisons between Johnny Gage and his brother and how Johnny got involved in this whole piece of of trying to respond to to young people, men especially, young African-American men that were falling in the crack and they were listed as gang members. And I thought it was a good fit because, in, in being very honest with you, Johnny and his brothers had at some point in time had been involved in the criminal justice system. But it was a good, it was a, it was a good fit because they were familiar with all of the issues that were, and one would fall in the hole mm -hmm. in, in this yep. crack and whatever. And so by them starting this school, I thought it was great at the time. However, they didn't have the kind of the same support as right. I saw it. Like right. like Ray and and and, uh, and like like Ray and uh, Tony. Tony, they didn't have the same thing. No corporate. Uh, I mean, you know, hey, when you start thinking about the kind of support funding that they've got today, and it was a both of them were charters. Yep. To a certain degree, they pick up ten million bucks a year. That's their budget right now. And Johnny and them had started, if you will, just in a modest little place. Yep. You know, in a house, if you will, that they had gotten, if you will. Yep. But they had relationships. Yeah. They had relationships, yep. and those, and as you say, uh, by but that closeness and whatever, they walked you around. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But there were some other competitive elements that basically were making monies mm -hmm. on the same issue, but mm -hmm. realistically they couldn't perform as well as the gauges did. You right. get my point? Right. But, so they needed that other support mechanism, and I liked the idea when he, he made the point. I could see him doing that, saying, okay, fine, you, you come in, you give him a proposal, hey, come on in. Yeah. You know, he may not have had that expertise, but he, he was he was knowledgeable mm -hmm. enough to know how, how important education was. Sure. I don't know where they are at this point in time. I just hope that they may want to reconsider. Yes. Maybe they can reconsider, if you will. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I, I think about Wallapo. What was it? Wallapo, the jail site, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah, it, it's still vacant. Yeah. Maybe, hey, Johnny, uh, maybe you and brother might want to consider, maybe want to consider maybe uh, uh, putting together another proposal. Sure. And Jay's right there. <laughs> he's, willing, he's willing to come back and maybe talk to you about this whole issue. Right, Jay? Uh, I, a possibility. Make a phone call, you drop never, a dime. You never know. I'll pick it up. Johnny, give, give us a call. I'd really like Love to interview to you, and, and I really respect him. I really respect you, Johnny, and your brother and whatever for getting involved and trying to help those young people, and, and uh, you still much needed, okay? Very much so, because that's just like Jay says, it's about relationships, mm -hmm. and you had those relationships. Okay, 
Let's talk a little bit more about that piece. Are you, are you have any, any background in terms of where those guys are right now? I have right? none. No. I know, I think Johnny is in, I think he's in D.C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that he was DC. recruited out of that, but my point is that, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but he I don't. doing an excellent job here. Yes. And then all of a sudden, yes. bang, you get out, but then you don't, you don't, there's nothing. Yeah, I can't, I can't speak to it because I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't on the inside of anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. So Emoja still exists today? I believe so. But I don't know what it's. I don't know what its mission is. Mm -hmm. I don't know who they're serving mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. They may not exist. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Mm -hmm. It's been like I said. It's been at least 12 years mm -hmm. since I've had any contact. With but now, but now, like you said, we're, we're looking for that that leadership again. You know, we're looking for those Ray Learys, if you will, and those, yes, Tony and, Hobsons, and Tony Hobsons, and those Johnny Gages. If yes. You will. Where are they now? Any thoughts? Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Have you seen any? <laughs> have you seen any? Have you seen any? Have I seen any? Yes. No. You haven't seen any. I haven't looked hard, yeah. but you, you you don't miss them. Mm -hmm. You know, I think maybe they're in the younger crew. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're in the 30-somethings right now. Uh, but I don't know. I haven't. Uh, it's not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, I think back again, going back to that article again, there was another article talking to mm -hmm. one of the graduates. Mm -hmm. It was a law school now. He right. was a lawyer, if you will. But, but again, maybe that group, if you will, there might yeah. be leadership out of the group, if you will, not especially that uh, they're getting on into the ninth grade up, if you will. Yep. Got me? And maybe they might be able to inspire some folks to be a part Probably. of the leadership aspect of it. But again, it's... Uh, and this is part of the piece that actually Waiting for Superman brings out. Mm -hmm. I think too many people are waiting for the leader. They're waiting for Martin Luther King to show up again, mm -hmm. or Malcolm, mm -hmm. or someone, you know, Cesar mm -hmm. Chavez. You know, mm -hmm. I, they're mm -hmm. waiting for, and, and that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. However, we can't wait. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the person uh, that has a 14-year-old son mm -hmm. and an 11-year-old daughter, they can't afford to wait. Because mm -hmm. their daughters grow, you know, their daughter and their son, they're growing up. Mm -hmm. And they're growing up in a particular system that they need to know how to work. Mm -hmm. They need to know how to become successful within that system. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the work I do. Because mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy standing in front of a microphone going, mm -hmm. follow me, guys. Mm -hmm. I don't, haven't done that yet. And I don't know that I can. But, but you're in waiting. Me. You're here in waiting. You came I here. I may be. You no, know, you're here in waiting. And I'm thinking about Tony. I, I, for some reason, I, like I said, I, I'm really excited about that article as we're yes. reading that article. And, and it's kind of like saying Tony's a new leader, so to speak, because he's picking up this ninth yes. grade on. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And when I otherwise, had he not done that, I, and this yep. is just my, my prediction, if you will, had, uh, my perception, had he not done that mm -hmm. with Jefferson High School, yes. it would have been a, just another magnet school, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to be different did, now. Because they did change the, they did change the <laughs> it, principal. Yes. You know, Cynthia, Cynthia Harris was there and was did doing a great, great job. if you will. Great job. But then they, they replaced her, in all yes. due respect, uh, there's, a, there's a white female there, mm -hmm. a teacher, if you will. And I was mm -hmm. kind of like reacting to the fact, well, gee, it was nice it's college. Mm -hmm. and, you know, people think about money. So, hey, look, I want that. We're going on to the superintendent. Hey, I want my kid to go there, but I don't want this to be just a black school kind of thing. Sure. I'm just, you know, just, sure. let's say it. The sure. way it is, you know what I mean? Sure. But now that the fact that uh, Tony's jumped to the table. People are going to be more interested. Is, and I think I think African Americans will be given the opportunity, and they might be feeling more comfortable. Yes. And Latinos both. Yes. Uh, getting involved in the process. Because, yes. Because, again, he's bringing that expertise. Again, it's still local, right. if you will. So we want to take our hat off to them. Oh, uh, I do. And especially you, too. So, I mean, you, you're there to help him out on that piece. If he makes a phone call. I think he will after the uh, Maybe. He but, knows, I mean, I will do anything I can to help. You know where you are, right? Yes. And yes. Because that, that, as, cause as I was looking at your book and I'm looking at some of the inserts and some of the chapters that were involved, what every parent wants for their child and, and how to get it, I, I thought those are those, those are some very interesting points that you were making in, in some of the areas that you covered, laying the groundwork. Work. Uh, parenting in the 21st century, the fine art of motivation, growing a brain, connect, connecting <laughs> actions to consequences. I like that. Yep. Okay, the, the new fundamentals, attitude rules. I got to give Dr. Joy wow. credit for the growing wow. a brain piece. Create, creating the future, goal setting, planning, and organization, putting it all together, evaluating, adapting, persisting, and advocating, connecting, building meaningful relationships, Yep. making it happen, developing self discipline. The worst, best word in the teen lexicon. I mean, this, this is, and that's it. That's much needed, if you will. You know. Thank you. And um, and and I and there's a there's a certain amount of because I've said on the show many many occasions, 
that you know children were having children. Yes. I mean, many parents, if you will, have fell through the crack. They don't know how to get out. But yes. They may want to hold their kids up and give them the opportunity. Yes. If you will, to deal. And so I think it's very, very important, and it's, it's very important to have you on the show. You think we might want to spend a couple minutes now and see if we can get some callers to I'd call in? I'd love to. And see what they thought about the show and see what they think about some of the things that were said here today, okay? There's the number. It's on the screen. Give us a call. Give us a call. There's the number on the screen. Give us a call. Again, we're talking with Dr. Jay Kluski, Ph.D., very familiar with the issue of of the no child left behind here <laughs> in, in the Portland metropolitan area. Yes. Let's put it that way. And we've had some responses. <laughs> We're lucky we've had the, the SCIs of the world and we've had someone here that, that was part and parcel of that, even the House of Emotion. I'm very familiar with the other programs, the POICs mm -hmm, of the world, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. But we got some we got some roots. We got something now. They're good they programs. Yeah, they're, they're good program. Good they're program. Historically. But the relationships. That's why they're good. That's right. And especially That's how they, you know, not that they won't be a loss, if you will, that uh, young people are going to be given the opportunity to get a full scholarship. Yes. Well, Jefferson okay, here's School. something I, like I learned. That, but I hope they can expand that throughout. Here's something I learned the other day. We were talking earlier when we were off, off camera about, uh, about I not really believing anything anymore right. without doing my own research because okay. there's so much information out mm -hmm. there. I heard something that actually boggled. I was like amazed. And I didn't believe it. So I went online and checked it out. And I heard that college now at um, Ivy League schools, mm -hmm. very high profile um, private schools, doesn't cost anything anymore hmm. or not much for certain people. So I went online and applied for financial aid to three or four different universities, right, Cornell yeah, yeah. and Harvard and Stanford and okay. one or two others. Mm -hmm. And I put in uh, certain parameters, like a family situation, certain family financial situations. Mm -hmm. I found that if you are making $80,000 a year, which is not shabby in these times, right, right. and you have a family of four, right. maybe have a small home, mm -hmm. but no trust funds or anything mm -hmm. like that. It now costs less to send your child to Harvard than to the University of Oregon. Wow. Really? Yes. Seriously? Yes. Seriously. Now, it is a whole lot harder to get into Harvard, Stanford, Yale, Dartmouth, mm -hmm. those kind of schools than it is to U of O. But the cost is, way, it's not that the cost is the same, but the financial aid packages have increased dramatically. And I wanted to understand why. So apparently... I want to say three or four years ago, I'm not sure, but it's in the recent past, the government uh, stipulated that these universities with these huge endowments mm -hmm. have to actually use their endowments. Wow. So up yeah, until this time, sitting up there. Harvard's endowment 10 years ago was $33 billion. Jeez. Uh, and good for them. Oh, I yeah, mean, yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, I ain't yeah, angry. Yeah, it's a great institution. The money. All that. But what these, what many of these universities were doing mm -hmm. was taking a huge chunk of the money they earned off the endowment mm -hmm. and plowing it back into their endowment. And the government, somewhere, I don't know whether this was in the Bush administration or the beginning of the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure when it happened, but the government has decided that you, Harvard, Yale, Stanford, whoever, have to now use your endowment. Yeah, because they're getting a lot of contracts and this, that, yes. and grants. Oh, yeah, big time. So they have determined, seemingly, that if you can get into the school, you will go. Money will not be an issue. Interesting. And so many of our parents, when we would talk to kids, when I would talk work with kids, talk about college, the issue of money, always, you know, I mean, right. that's, for right. many families, right. that's a big, big block in the way. Right, right. Well, how, you know, how hard are you willing to work now? Because mm -hmm. you could go to Harvard. If you could get in. Well, but then at the same time, let's, let's jump in that other area. Maybe you can spend a couple minutes on that yeah. piece. You know, I'm well educated. I've got my degree. In this yeah. and the other. Where's the job? Well, this, <laughs> it's a great question. And thank you for asking because this is my work. Okay. What I have uh, seen is that parents today of all stripe across the socioeconomic spectrum, across the ethnic spectrum, are still focused on getting their kids to college as if that's the savior, mm -hmm. which 30 years ago it was. 30 years ago, if you had a college degree, you had a job. Mm -hmm. You had a good middle class, whatever. It was a ticket out of any community. Mm -hmm. Fine. Today, not the case. Today, our kids need... Now, college degree is still important, mm -hmm. very important. 
but they need more skills. They need more tools.